Geet Lulla is joining us from Comscore. I'm joined by Pankaj Krishna from Chrome and Salil Kumar from India Today Group. So great to have you all. And we're going to talk about something that has obsessed so many of us, particularly when we moved into the world of TV, which is measurement. How do you measure the ratings of a channel? How do you decide which channel is the most watched? Since we live in a world where every channel claims we are number one and we are most watched. And maybe we can make some sense of that and look to what the world will be like five years from now. Uh, and kicking off from that, I want to ask all of you the big question. Can we say with confidence that we are truly now in a world where we are device agnostic? It simply doesn't matter where the content will be put out. As long as the viewer can consume it, that's all that matters. And if that is the future, how are you going to measure that multimedia world? You want to start, Pankaj, first. Yeah, okay. So, uh, the thing as you move from cable and satellite, which was the conventional means of broadcast to digital, the beauty of digital, to measure digital, you don't need a hardware device. It's all digital. You need an application or an SDK that gets inserted in the target device. So, as you move along, consumption definitely gets device agnostic. But depending on the kind of content, so if you're probably watching a match and if you have access to a 50-inch TV versus a 10-inch mobile phone, you'll prefer the TV. Mm -hmm. But as far as news is concerned, as far as entertainment is concerned, everything is available on pretty much all devices. So we are moving completely device agnostic. And as far as the measurement is concerned, there are three forms, cable and satellite, what we measure, the numbers that I've got, which we discussed are for anything outside of cable, which is digital. Mm -hmm. Broadly, three categories uh, that we put them into. Uh, browsers, mm -hmm. mobile phones, and connected TVs. And they're all exponentially growing. Mobile, practically everyone has a mobile phone. And connected TVs are currently standing at 22 million. So the numbers are exploding. So are, are you telling, in a sense, this, the advertising community out there that start looking at the world beyond that cable and satellite TV measurement that would come every Thursday and Friday? That we are actually out there now in a completely new world. Keith? We'll, we'll come back to you, Pankaj. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the question is not uh, this or that. Every time there is a technology-based disruption, the world goes, oh, the past is dead and the future, you know, like, the king is dead, long live the king types. But actually, I don't think that's true. I think it's a question of and. You, you will have something continuing from the past and you will have the new stuff. You know, there are generational factors, there are cultural factors, there are obviously technology factors, there are cost economic factors. So I think the uh, reality today is it's that we are moving away from a monolithic approach to advertising to a very, very fragmented one. One analogy I like to use is it's not comparing apples to oranges, but it's comparing a watermelon to grapes, right? And the watermelon is the old world, it's monolithic. It's grapes today, you know, you have hundreds of different varieties. You have, you know, geographies, languages, cultures, devices. So you need to be able to measure each one of them. And are we in a position to do that accurately now? You need to do it accurately, you need to do it with high fidelity, you need to do it in a timely manner, right? You need to report it more frequently than monthly, for example, and I'm saying that. Uh, so I think all of those are very, very important. Saril, uh, you know, just as preliminary remarks, you are part of this transition of a group like India Today that moves from traditional old media, the magazine, to TV, to now, all these disruptors in the world of uh, the various tux that you have, uh, digital sites, regional languages. What is your biggest takeaway in the shift that's taking place from traditional media to using traditional media, but simply through new uh, 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 devices and new formats? So, let's put it like this. We were, we were uh, really early to catch the trend and we realized that consumers were wanting to uh, consume content right across various platforms and news is another form of factor adds to a form of factor. Mm -hmm. So you want to consume news where you are at any point of time if some event has happened. So we we got that trend and we were able to uh, create what we call as mobile first video first library and we expanded with the tux. Uh, we were the first ones to launch even on the connected TV device. So we were the first ones to launch a connected device feed which came out as a third feed from, for all our channels. 
and today we are the world's most subscribed news channel on YouTube alone with 56.9 million uh, subscribers as I talk. So it is in terms of volume you are telling me that the one of the lessons is that the moment you go multi, you know, moment you find new devices to, to stream your content, your reach is rising exponentially, correct? Correct. So there are multiple platforms. I mean, you know, he's speaking of linear and cable. I'm talking about uh, even cars. Now you have all the connected cars. You have uh, refrigerators that are going to be coming out, which have screens. And uh, with all these platforms, your consumption is going to grow. Pankaj has a presentation. Now that's very dangerous when someone from the world of measurement talks of a presentation. He wanted 10 minutes for it. We have 25 minutes on the session. Let's follow the Samir Jain philosophy that an average person's attention span is now yeah. just a couple of minutes. So you, in the next two minutes, you've got two minutes to crunch that 10 minute presentation. Let's see how well you do it. Go for it. So you've already conned me with the jacket. I got the jacket because you were wearing a jacket. Now you've removed it. No, I'm, so I'm now, a, got now two minutes to wrap this up. I'm an authentic goan. So okay, so uh, the time starts now. Have you got the screen up and running? Yeah. Okay, broadly so, uh, just to quickly split the, the de incremental reach broadly is uh, three factors as we discussed. Browsers, which currently stand at about 223 million in India. Mobile devices, 619 million. Connected TVs are exploding. Practically anyone who buys a TV today, 90% of sales of television are connected TV. That's about 22 million. And the challenge of the industry is to measure that. Uh, this data is being released for the first time. No one has seen this before. If you were to look at the intersection of cable, and internet. The total universe stands at about 1174 of which cable and satellite is about 726 million with internet at 836 million. And the common intersection of the two is 387 million. So most of us would probably fall on this side which is 448 million which is only internet and partly we had a cable connection or we might not have it at this point in time. Cable and satellite is, is slightly uh, going down. If you were to look at the reach, now this is interesting, we've uh, tried to understand the consumption of linear TV on digital platforms, which is the incremental reach, and the dissection stands as follows. We've taken the top 10 channels as of now on, on, on digital, linear content. So at number 10, you've got News24 hitting almost 40 million unique one-minute views in a month for the month of April. Uh, News Nation at number 9, India TV. TV9, Bharatwash, News18, India in the top 10. Top 5 channels in terms of consumption. The numbers are pretty healthy. ABP News stands at about 65 million amongst the top 5 content uh, for, for the month. Republic Bharat and you've got Times Now Now Bharat. Z News comes at about almost 90 million unique one minute views for the month of April. The lead here, you've got a distinct number which is Ajtak, which again gets validated with the uh, this again gets validated if you were to look at the YouTube data as well with 56 million subscribers, both the data tend to marry each other. That's the number of people who watch content in a month. This is a chart explaining the same but there's a time crunch, I skipped through that. If you were to look at the same data excluding YouTube, so same data minus YouTube VOD, so it includes YouTube Live but no YouTube VOD. You've got good news today which makes an entry in the top 10. You've got News Nation again. Times Now, Now Bharat, TV9, Bharat was News, 18 in India, India TV, Z News, Republic Bharat and the top two we've got uh, ABP News at two. When you go look at linear content at number one, uh, it's Ajtak. At almost, almost 30 million uh, views minus YouTube VOD, so it's all live. This is live consumption through digital. Overall reach would be this is pretty interesting. So overall reach would be the data that you get every Thursday, cable and satellite data. We've used a different panel for that. Uh, there are certain channels which are no longer being reported by the ratings agency. So we've used a different panel. If you add the total numbers of linear plus uh, cable and satellite plus digital for linear broadcast, at number 9 there is Z Hindustan at 200 million. News Nation, News 18 India, Times Now, Now Bharat, Republic Bharat. And the top 3 you've got ABP at almost 300 million. Now that's a huge number. What's very interesting is you need to see the incremental reach. The green numbers would be what is incremental. 
So Z News stands at number two. At number one, you've got Aztak. So that's about what, what is important to note here, which is, which is very interesting, is on this chart. The total digital reach is about 115 million. Looking at Aztak, cable and satellite comes to, comes to about 225 million. So the incremental reach, Rajdeep, the incremental reach, which is digital over linear, is 115 divided by 225, which is above 50 percent. So linear content continues to be consumed, moving from cable and satellite transmission to digital How transmission. How much would that have been one year ago? It would have been much lower, I think exponentially lower, I, probably some 15 percent or 20 percent. The numbers have exploded. That's a guess, I'll come back with the exact number, broadly it should be around the range of 20 percent. Okay. Which is now at 50 percent, which will grow further. Okay. I didn't want to stop. Sorry, one more thing. So cable yeah. and satellite is not declining in terms of consumption. Okay. Right? It's, the, it's moving, uh, digital is increasing. Okay. I didn't want to stop him because he kept sort of pumping up Ajtak. So <laughs> it, it just seemed that I was going to wear my advertiser's hat and say, you know, if you're, if you're giving us good I branding, did, I, I, why I, stop I, it? I did validate that with the fact that if you were to look at YouTube data, which is pretty, pretty much sensors, Ajtak is again got 56 million subscribers, which will collaborate with, with this data. So digital, to a great extent, is dominated by YouTube. And you see a skew happening from there as well. Right. If we look five years from now, will we see a cleaner, healthier process, more transparent, less opaque, less prone to manipulation? Yes or no? Yes. Uh, but obviously, it's not going to be a simple route. I think there's uh, two elements that are very, very, very important. The first is that we have to blend the panel-based approach, which has been the traditional approach, uh, which is based on sampling, with a census approach. Right? I think it's only when we do this, and that's what the WFA is working towards with the, you know, the uh, ANA POC in the US, blending multiple data sets, but more importantly, blending panel and census information to come up with a true representation of consumption across different channels. And that's the theme of our panel today. Uh, but the second thing that's extremely important to achieve that in five years' time is collaboration. I think the, the historical approach has been dominance, right? Because it's monolithic, so we want to dominate this particular space. But increasingly, as we've seen, the, uh, the consumption ecosystem and the technology uh, innovation happen, and the, the, the way content is consumed, the type of content that's consumed is fragmented. And there's no single party that can do everything. We have to collaborate. But for that, we have to start off with the mindset of being willing to collaborate. Now, whether that's going to happen, I think that will define whether we're actually seeing all those nice things that are transparent, clean, accurate in, you know, why five years? That could happen in two years' time. Do you see that happening? Saril, Bankaj? So, I think he's hammered the nail on the head. Uh, collaboration is the key to getting census-level data. Till there is no census, it's always going to be a sample and a panel. Anytime there is a sample, it is, it is liable to be rigged or cheated, and that's a research constraint. And I just the saw Pankaj's data, so I think I've got a great collaboration potential here. You know, you can look at Comsco data next time. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so it's all about, uh, uh, collab uh, on the collaboration, it's all about collaboration, getting data from all, all stakeholders, and if they were to come on the same platform and share the data, then you've got a, a rig free currency. But again, why we fail wherever there is a human intervention and wherever there is a conflict of interest or wherever there is a monetary incentive. The reason we moved from one agency to another was to have stakeholders run the thing. But then again, everyone has a conflict of interest. There, there, there are conflicts of interest. The only way this would succeed is when multiple parties come together, the and data is all census, and technology, now if you look at chat, GTP could draft a letter for you. If you have technology to simply take the input data and come out with a non-human intervention output data, you have a rig-free uh, currency across, going for you. Across channels, right? Across channels. Across channels. TV, mobile, browser, I, you name it. I just yeah. have to add to this. You know, one of the things that we realized today is that it's a lot of personalization. So all the platforms you're talking, even if I take a landing page kind of structure, the page to every individual is different. And what comes up as first, what comes up on your feed, the feeds are very different. So there is an, and plus the data volume is much higher. For example, we can see it in real time, how many people are watching us on say, a platform like say YouTube. It announces the concurrency every time it runs. So you have real time data 
all the time running with you and by the data they've showed and all the data Sorry, we have. Sorry, I'm adding to one thing. The future, Rajdeep, which you will see very soon, like you see a sensex of what's happening now, you will have data very soon telling you what the world, watch the world, watch the world, watch what they're watching now in real in time. In real time. You will have that. And programmatic advertising would be defined by inserting ads saying that there's a breaking news coming up and you'll have advertisers bidding for the right price in real time. That's because I, happened. because in conclusion, I remember a couple of weeks ago, a week ago, we were doing the Karnataka election and about 11 o'clock I see a flash that, you know, India today is number one on YouTube, so many concurrent users. You think eventually that will be far more valuable in a way than waiting till the next Thursday to find out a sampling survey of data that you and I both know is possibly manipulated. Am I correct? That you're going to actually go to the advertiser and convince him or her that that's the way forward. Manipulated or it could be a research constraint. It is non-representative to a great extent. But you're saying real-time data will increasingly become valuable and monetizable. That's the only the way used data. That has right? to be the currency in the future. Yes. That's the only way you use data when it's real-time and okay. the numbers are shooting up and that's when you insert an ad. What's the point of knowing what happened last week, nine days ago and then making a guess and going to a wrong platform? Doesn't work that way. Everything's going to go real-time. Okay. I think that's a positive note on which to... We, we live in real time and the time says that we are finished and we've got my friend uh, uh, Anuradha Sengupta to come uh, who spent a lifetime with all of you which is why she's far happier than me. I've spent a lifetime talking to politicians which is why my hair's gone grey and she's as young as ever. Uh, but uh, thank you all very much for, uh, for enlightening, enlightening us and giving us hope. Uh, amidst the darkness of ratings and, and the pressures that it puts on people. Pankaj, Geet, uh, Salil, wonderful to have you here thank you. at thank you. the AdFest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.